Happy New Year, options traders. Welcome, everyone. And this is our first video of 2019, and I thought it was only fitting to talk about implied volatility because of all the market madness we've had, even from the first few trading days of this year, and certainly from the last quarter of 2018. But implied volatility is an important topic, especially for all of our new traders out there. Most people have heard of it, but very few people understand why it's important and how to use it. So let's take a look at implied volatility and how you can make better option trading decisions. Implied volatility is a concept that comes from an option pricing model. And there's a lot of different ones out there. The original and still probably the most widely used is the Black-Scholes pricing model. But regardless of which one you use, they're going to ask for several factors. And in the Black-Scholes model, they're going to ask for the stock price, the exercise price or the strike price, time to expiration, risk-free interest rate, if there's any dividends paid over the life of the option. And then finally, they're going to ask for this concept of volatility. And I've talked about volatility in previous classes, but I've highlighted it in red because it is really the only true unknown factor that goes into an option. Why is that? Well, think about it. Take a look at the other five factors. If we're trying to evaluate an option, we certainly know the stock price. It's whatever the current stock price is, there's no room for argument. If we're evaluating the $100 strike, we have to use that. If there's 30 days to expiration, we need to use 30. If the risk-free interest rate is 2%, that's what everybody's going to be using. If there's no dividends paid over the life of the option, we need to use zero. But the only one where we have room for debate is volatility. And the reason is that a pricing model doesn't really care what the past volatility has been. We can easily look that up and see what it's been for a stock. To properly price an option, we need to know what the future volatility will be over the life of the option. But if we put these six factors into a pricing model, it's going to give us as an output the option's theoretical price, also called the fair value. So why are we concerned with an option's fair value? Well, fair value is an important topic because it is the price at which the buyer and the seller are expected to just break even over the long run. That's an important phrase right there. On any given trade, sure, the buyer or the seller is probably going to win. One side's probably going to get the better deal. But it's over the long run that they are both expected to break even. So another way of looking at it is that fair value is the price that doesn't favor one side over the other. And you'll hear that a lot, especially among new traders. And they'll say, well, the sellers always win or the sellers have an edge. That can't be true in the long run because if it was true, people would continue to sell options and pick up the free money. And they need to sell it down to a level to where it's eh, kind of on the fence, not necessarily true anymore. But we want to know where that level is. So that's the idea of volatility. And we can certainly look that up on a platform and see what a stock's past volatility has been. And that's generally going to give us an indication of what we should use in our pricing model. But now let's take a look at what implied volatility is. So now we're looking at our stock and let's say that the stock is trading for 100 and I put that into the pricing model. The exercise price is 100, 30 days to expiration, risk-free interest rate 2%, dividends, there's no dividends, and volatility, I look up on my platform and it says, well, over the past 30 days or some time frame, the stock's volatility has been 20%. Okay, well, that's all great. I pop these numbers into the pricing model and it says that the options theoretical value is $2.37. So again, what this means is that if I paid $2.37 for hundreds or thousands of options just like this, I would be expected to just break even in the long run. That's not counting commissions. That's just by paying $2.37. If I was the seller of the option and I received $2.37 hundreds or thousands of times under these exact conditions, I would just break even. However, Let's say we go to our broker's platform and we say, well, I just calculated that this option should be trading for $2.37. But we look it up and we see that it's trading for $4. That's the market price. What went wrong? Well, nothing really went wrong. The difference is that the traders, the people in the market must be having a different assessment of volatility. So what we can do is we can work the model backwards. Instead of saying, give me the volatility and I'll give you the options theoretical price, 
Let's take a look at the options market price and say what volatility is the market using. So if the market price of the option is $4, what I'm trying to do is figure out what volatility is necessary to make that option price be $4. And whatever that volatility is, is called the implied volatility. It's the volatility that the market is implying simply by being willing to pay $4 for this option. So how can we figure this out? Well, let's go over to the SIBO's pricing model and take a look. All right, so here we are at the SIBO's pricing model. I've used this in previous videos, but the best way to find it is to just go to Google and type CBOE, Option Pricing Calculator, and it'll bring you right to it. So let's take a look at the example that I use. Let's say that the stock price is currently 100. The strike that we're interested in is the at the money is also 100. Days to expiration, there's 30 days to expiration. Volatility, we said was 20%. Interest rate. Now, a nice little feature about this calculator is that it will give you the interest rate. And what it does, it goes and it looks in the market for a treasury bill with 30 days to maturity. So this is really the interest rate you'd want to use in the real world. But for my example, I just used 2%. So I'm going to change that back to 2. Dividends, let's make 0. We said there were no dividends that were paid. We choose Calculate. And over here is the $2.37 option that we looked at. But now I said that the market price, though, is $4. We looked at our broker's platform. We're going, what's going on here? The market's trading it for four. I think it's worth 236. Well, again, the only number over here that the market could be using that's different is the volatility number. All of these others are set in stone. So there's a few ways I could find the implied volatility. One we might call the hunt and peck method. Let's just try different volatility numbers. I could try 22, 25, 30. I could keep trying different numbers until this options price becomes four. But there's an easier way. And we come down here to the implied volatility calculator. And if we're looking at a call option, I'm going to choose call from this drop down menu. And I'm going to type in the options market price, which in my example was $4. And then I just choose this calculate button down here. And it tells me that the implied volatility is 34.28. Let's call it 34.3%. What does that mean? It means if we put 34.3 as our volatility, 34.3, and I choose calculate, this number should become $4. So watch this. And there's the $4 option price. So again, we're just working the pricing model backwards. We're saying if the traders are willing to buy and sell this option at four, that's the current market price, they must be expecting a future volatility of 34.3% on the option. So now the big question is, is 34.3% high or low? What you don't want to do as an options trader is say, well, $4 is pretty cheap. Let me be a buyer. That's a pretty good deal. Uh-uh. It's got nothing to do with anything. You don't want to look at these numbers and try to assess their value based on an absolute benchmark, such as all options below $3 are a good deal, or all options below $5 are cheap. That's just absolutely wrong. A 50 cent option could be grossly overpriced. A $50 option could be the steal of the century. It depends on how much volatility you're getting for that price. But right now in this example, what we know is that the market is pricing this option at a volatility of about 34%. So how can you use this information to make better decisions? Well, let's go over to the E-Trade platform and take a look. Well, here we are in the E-Trade platform, and let's take a look at Apple trading down about 14 points, almost 9%. This is the day after they came out with the news about the earnings warning with the sluggish sales on iPhones and the watches. So trading down quite a bit, but let's say that we wanted to buy or even sell options for that matter on Apple. Is it a good time to do it? Are they relatively cheap or relatively expensive? Well, you can come up here to studies Go to All Studies, and over on the far right, we have Volatility. If you select that one, you can choose two color codes. I'm just going to leave the standard defaults here, but blue is historical volatility. That's what the stock actually did, and the orange is the implied volatility. It's the volatility that the market is expecting to be true over the life of the option. 
So once we choose save, I'm going to lift this up a bit. We're gonna get a nice graph down here. So remember that the blue line is the actual volatility of the stock. So if we look all the way over here to the right, you can see that the stock is trading at about 42% volatility. This is measured over a 30-day period. However, the implied volatility on the orange line is about 39.4. So on one hand, we could say, relatively speaking, that the options are fairly cheap compared to the volatility being delivered by the stock. The stock's generating 42%, but we're only paying for 39.4%. That's one consideration to look at. However, there's another one. Let's look at it in absolute terms. Let's go back to maybe to 2017. Let me grab some crosshairs up here so we can see it better. But if you look back in 2017, the very lowest down here, you can see over on the right, is about 13%. Right, so I'm looking at this orange line. It's about the lowest it ever was. So that is clearly a very good buying opportunity for options you certainly would have to be careful about selling options at these volatility levels. But look what happens over time. We got into some fairly high levels here, about 28%. And then finally, when we got into October, November, December of last year, look at the volatility on the stock, way up here at 47, yeah, almost 47%. But the implied volatility was far down, about 25% down here. So what you're going to see is that they will tend to cross. And so even though, relatively speaking, we said that the implied volatility is below the historic volatility, look at where it is in absolute terms. We're still up here at 39, almost 40%. And if you go back to 2017, how many times has the implied volatility been up at this level right? There's a crosshairs right there. You had one time right here and maybe a couple more back in here. So in relative terms, we are at very high levels. Even though the implied volatility is below the historic, we are still at very, very high implied volatility levels. And so you have to be careful about buying options here. Why? Because volatility tends to revert to the mean. And you can clearly see it in this graph. Take a look. You can see that the orange line back in here is above the blue. Traders were paying a lot more for the volatility for the options than was being generated by the stock. The orange line is above the blue. But then shortly after, the blue line is above the orange. And then later, orange is above the blue. Keep going, orange is above the blue. Come over here, blue is above the orange. They tend to keep flipping. And even right now, the blue or the historic volatility tends to be above the implied. So the main reason for this flip-flopping is that back in here, when we got into the turmoil in October, look at the orange line up here. People were paying dearly for options, whether calls or puts. They were paying through the nose to them because the implied volatility was so high. People were saying, I don't care what price I have to pay. I just want to buy these options for protection. But then after they start getting losing trade after losing trade after losing trade, and the sellers are going, hey, this is great. It's like free money. Sellers start pushing down the prices. They become more aggressive with selling. And the buyers start kind of shading their bids down. And then eventually the implied volatility will fall below the historic. So they tend to just oscillate back and forth. And that's just true about volatility in general. So if you're looking at buying options right now, at least for Apple, you can see that they are at very high levels, historically speaking. And so you can't just look at the option and say, well, it's a $4 option or a $6 option and therefore it's a good deal. All options, calls and puts for Apple right now are extremely expensive and volatility is the reason. So that's a basic way that you can use volatility and the implied volatility to get a handle on whether you should be leaning towards the buy side or towards the sell side. In future videos, I'm going to show you some other techniques for looking at the bid implied volatility and the ask implied volatility and some other neat little techniques. But you gotta start by understanding implied volatility. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and strategy lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.